Good evening, ladies and gents. Um, as they said before, my name is Sarah Meltzer. I'm an educated uh, classical musician. I play violin and viola. Viola is a violin, but bigger. Uh, I'm uh, here tonight not to entertain you with uh, sounds, but uh, to entertain uh, your minds in a way. Um, after many years of um, performing on the stage, being on this side of the stage, I have decided five years ago to watch the stage from the other side. So I opened my own agency, and now I'm managing my own artists. Two years ago, I have been invited to a um, um, very prestigious festival in China, and I got a phone call from a, a friend of mine, and he said, listen, um, he is a consultant from, for non-polluting industries, which I think it's a very interesting uh, place. Today, everybody wants to be ecologic. We don't want to pollute. We don't want to do anything, even that today, here with the electricity and everything, what we are doing, we are polluting. So um, he said, listen, I'm giving this uh, advice to a local government here, um, a beautiful area, an amazing area with beautiful gardens like that only the Chinese know to do, very clean and very meticulous, um, artistic, beautiful colors, um, a business for people that they have industries for, with non-pollution. He said, but they would like to keep the businessmen here a bit more. They are coming one day, two days, two days, three days, and they just go home <coughs> to leave. But we would like to give them something more. We'd like to have something more for them. And I said, listen, let me, let me come there. Let me be there. I would like to analyze. I would like to see what it's about. And uh, then maybe I can advise something how to do it. So I went there. I was very impressed of what they have done. And I said, listen, it's very simple. It's extremely simple, but sometimes the solutions are under our, our nose. And uh, we don't, can we pass? And we, we are looking all the time very, very far, but we have the solutions under our nose. So um, in order to make a person to stay in one place, to stay more time, we need to give him three basic things. Health services, culture, and education. You give this, the person will stay. You have only two of them, or one of them, the person will leave immediately. So, we can go. Can we move? <laughs> I'm sorry. So, yeah, we can play all of it, and I will, we can play. Oh, okay. So, um, I would like to ask between you, maybe I think believe most of you, do, do you have children? Yes. You have children, okay? Plenty. Part of you plenty, part of you less. Okay, if may I ask, I don't know, you, sir? Is that okay? Do you have children? Okay, you don't need to tell me. Just tell me their ages and uh, how old are them? Okay. Five years old. What do you think when you think of your children? Of education, future, what do you think about them? What, what do you like to give them? Better education, healthcare. Uh, better education. Do you think sometimes to give them maybe better education, maybe that you had the chance to have in your life or your parents, to have like a better future, a better education for your children? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. A better place for them? Yeah. Better friends, a better a, a social place, of course. Of course. So, can we go uh, to the one back? Sorry. So yes, it's absolutely normal. We all think about the same things when we are adults. We start to understand and take responsibility regarding our next generation, their near future, or our society, future in general. We want to be part of it, to be influential, to be able to do and to give more and to make a change related to next generations by thinking that things can be done in an easier, faster, and better way for them. We want that our children will get a better education in a better school than we did, to be able to live in a better surrounding than we did, to have friends from better and higher social level, 
to earn much faster and much more money than we, had, we, we did, and yes, to have a better quality of life than we had or our own parents had to achieve better things in life faster. We agree with that, all of us. These thoughts are perfectly normal, and it's very good to have them. Better sooner than later. They can come naturally at a certain time in our lives as adults, or it can be done systematically as things to think about of our own future generation, children, grandchildren, family children. Usual, we are going a bit on the psychology, and I'm not a, 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 um, a psychologic person. When we are adults, we are getting married, we have our own family, immediately we think what it's going to be going with our children how we are going to do the things better for them, how we are going to provide them a better thing. Can we go to the next one, please? So do we have the power to change things for our next generation in education and culture? Do we want to change things for our generation, our next generation in education and culture? Do we want to share our present ideas and uh, business for our next generation? I believe that the answer is yes for everybody. As influential people in our countries or and in your beyond the borders of your countries, I would like to show you a few examples related to education, culture, arts and business for our next generations. The main idea is to educate in a way that talks the language of the new generation. What does this mean? We can go to the next one. So we have here uh, Beethoven, that I think he was very happy of having uh, a computer today. I think it was easier for him to compose now than writing and drawing. <laughs> Okay, so the children nowadays are very fast in using technology. We know that and we fight them for that, right? Um, as we all know, technology saves time and money too. So for example, we can give classical music lessons via an optic wire, like a Skype program, provided by an internet company in your own country via a website where children can buy packages of lessons for different levels with national or international teachers, saving in this way money and time for travel. I'm just going to give you just an example. Uh, Intel um, in Israel was in, is engaged with such a project already three years. We start in a very, uh, we start in Nazareth, in a beautiful town for uh, children uh, playing violin and piano um, on, on a very, very low level, just they are just starting to play. So we gave them packages of now they can uh, learn, they can study with this teacher. When they are going to have another level, they are going to go to a different teacher. When they are going to be to a different level, they can go to academy. And then if, when they are going to be big, big soloists and big performance, they can take lessons with big, big teachers from abroad. So um, we go to the next. <clears throat> so the, teach the children can take classical music lessons via an internet program that can be recorded and saved. So the student can rehearse with the computer on his own free time as many times as he wants. What does it mean? For example, he's having a frontal lesson with the teacher and the, the, the lesson, it's recorded, it's exactly like a Skype program, it's working. And the, the teacher will say, uh, sorry, but you made a mistake here. And the child will say, no, I didn't make a mistake, because they are children, they never make mistakes. So the, the teacher will say, I'm sorry, you can rewind the, the lesson now, and he can rewind only that minute, and he will see, yes, I did a mistake. So he, he can go, back and uh, train. Uh, Mari Tarvaniemi, who is a PhD at the Cognitive Brain Research Unit Institute of Behavioral Sciences, University of Helsinki, Finland, held a very interesting panel at Suomi Arena just last week. It's funny, I've never met this lady. We just met last week by email. And we are already like this connected. 
Why? Because we are dealing with the same thing. But she's a scientist, she's researching the brain, and I'm a former musician and um, a business person. So she explained the importance of music education for children starting from very young ages due to the fact that musical education affects directly and immediately their achievements in mathematics, language skills, and improve their behavior in general. That we know that children, or sometimes we have this, that babies, mother put, you know, when they are pregnant, they put headphones on their belly so the babies will listen for classical music or light music in order to have like a very quiet and calm behavior. Please, next. Another educational culture and business art project is the Letters Park by the innovative Russian artist Ruslan Sergeyev. In many, many societies and countries, disabled people are ashamed for the society. And many times they are ashamed for a family. It's hard for us to deal with a person which has disabilities, motorical or brain disability. The um, artist, this amazing artist, Ruslan Sergeyev, invented something that he said why disabled persons or children cannot play with the others in a playground where anybody can play. So he invented the Letters Park, which is a park made of statues. I will show you immediately the pictures, with wide openings where children in wheelchairs or with their own disabilities, crotches or whatever, they can um, help themselves with cables and bars so they can play in a playground like any other child and be fully supervised and not being taken care of from a short distance. So the park, it's a multifunctional, uh, the multifunctional sculptures are designed with a full access for disabled people. Large white spaces are alone in passage with a wheelchair and aluminum bars and iron cables allowing to move inside the playground safely. The playground is very open in its space, so the family can control and supervise the disabled person. In the letters park, children and adults with disabilities, but not only, can play together and experience a full artistic educational playing surrounding, using all senses. At the same time, by touching the sculptures, they are made of ceramic, pieces of ceramic, enjoying the fascinating colors and learning about the uh, huge nuances having a full quality time without any physical limits, using their bodies to play by pulling the cables and the bars inside a playground. The whole project creates a magical atmosphere for children and adults, having natural and f nature and fantasy ele uh, elements making the learning process easy and fun. Why is it called Letters Park? Because the statues, the sculptures are letters. So, for example, there's a huge A, like seven meters high, it's, and there is a statue from Apple. So they can learn that A, it's from Apple, or F from F. So we have here an ant. We, he's using also nature things, nature uh, animals, insects. So the children can go inside. As you can see, they can play. And they are free, and nobody is uh, worried that they are going to get injured. Can you go to the next one, please? <laughs> We can see here a very happy child. <laughs> and you can see she has these stripes, yes? The next one, please. This is a very interesting sculpture. This is a wave from the sea. It's by the seaside, and he made a sea wave. So people can just rest there, it's just a bench, but it's an artistical bench. The next one, please. This is the letter park. It's just a schizo of it. We don't have pictures. So uh, I'm sure that you are going to find your language there. I would like to thank you very much. <laughs> I
you knock me out now. I, I don't have a gun. <laughs> no, I know, I know. It was a, it was a, no, I understand. It was a, it was a, um, I believe that even in your situation that you just said, in certain areas, maybe not on all of them, but the thing is to get to the villages, to the outside areas and not in the center of town where you do have electricity. But a wireless, an optic wire, in the moment that you have internet, any business person, it's a simple thing. Skype is the most simple program in this world. If children, they don't need any, each of them to have an iPad. Okay, an iPad, this is West. Yes, you are right. But if they have a teacher which wants to teach them something, from the big town to the village, okay? It's enough to have only one screen and to put the children together in front of that screen. They don't need to have all of them iPads. iPads is a spoiled way of education, which is fine. I, I believe it's fine. But it's a matter of willing. It's a matter of saying, okay, Let's do it in this way. That's what we can do now. The next step, we are going to do it better. We are going to have more money or more opportunities. But I'm sure, I, I do not know, I, I need to analyze, I, I need to understand more, but I'm sure that the, the solution is just here. We are all the time like looking for solutions very far. Oh, what we can do, we should bring from outside. We should, ah, we, we need it, no. The solution is there. I'm sure that you have good teachers. I'm sure that you have teachers that they were educated outside. And I'm sure that they can give. You need just to use them. Bring them to the place that you need. I'm sure of that. People are getting very, um, let's say, um, they feel here something here, you know, in their guts. When you talk with them about their children, you know, try to make you know just a test. Find a friend or someone that you know on the street, and um, talk with him about weather. And immediately after that, ask, "Do you have children?" You are going to find immediately the tone; it's changed. I am sure that in you, I, I don't know personally in your government, but when I was advising for China. I asked the local government, say, listen, they said, oh, we don't have money, but we need this. And I said, listen, give me the name of the person in the government that has a disabled child, and I'm telling you tomorrow is giving you the money. Because this is a thing that hurts. When you have a disabled child at home and you cannot deal with, with the person, you, you cannot deal with the child, you need care, you need this, you need this, you need this. The person who's in a government and has a child which is disabled, a child we have, who has learning and he's, he's a, a dyslect, thinks that can you know, move him from somewhere here inside because he feels it. Otherwise, he does not care. So, ah, I don't care. I, I have other things to do. Exactly. Exactly. But to find that person, you know, just uh, put the sword and turn it a bit, that's enough. He's going to do it. If he's an influent person, and he's in a, in a position that he can say, this is important for us, people are going to do it. And if you don't find that person, it's like that. It's Always, I, I'm, maybe it sounds a bit rude what I'm going to, maybe it sounds a bit, I don't know, hurting or rude. We do have among us people with children with disabilities. It's not a shame, it's not a secret. They are. You are going to find one. Someone that knows someone, he's going to get there. By the way, you don't need to get the whole project. It's enough to get, you know, two, three, it's enough. In order to make a point that, okay, we align ourselves also, I'm sorry, with the West. Because this is also a thing of countries that they are, okay, as you said, and say, well, this is for, for the West. We are in a developed country. We don't have electricity. Yes, but in the same time, for example, countries that they use, um, um, funds from Europe, from U Union, they want to align themselves. They say, listen, I want to make this project for disabled children. I need this amount of money because otherwise I, you know, I need to align myself to the West. 
people give. It's, it's absolutely checked. Believe me, it's checked. You go to there, to the, to the sensitive point, to the sensitive string, people give. Health, education, and culture, yes. Thank you very much, or another question? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.